Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to coat a butt joint. So a butt joint is where the two four foot ends of the drywall meet. And after you tape it, it creates a humped joint that you need to float out really wide to be able to hide it. So what you're going to need is a 10 or a 12 inch knife. I have a 12 inch knife here. I'm actually a trowel guy, but because I know most people watching this are going to be using knives, I will struggle along with you with this giant oversized tool. So I have a pan with some all-purpose mud in it. You can use all-purpose or topping for this. And I have it thinned down to fairly loose. It'll fall out of this if I don't hold it right. Now I need it fairly loose because using a knife this big is not easy on the hands or wrists. And when you've done this for as long as I have, you've kind of got carpal tunnel. So first, it's a really good idea to check the butt joint to see what it needs. So what I mean by that is you put your knife on the joint to see how much fill it needs. Now this one isn't rocking very much, so it doesn't need very much fill. Let's check the bottom. Oh, this is an easy one. It's too easy. This one's almost flat. Well, that demonstrates why you check it. This one doesn't need much, so we'll do this one real quick, and then we'll find another one that's bigger, wider, and needs more fanning. So this little one doesn't require much, and this is going to be treated basically like a flat joint. Anyways, I'm going to start from just above the flat. I'm going to go down. Up like that. And now I'm going to feather the edge. Feather the edge. I'll go across the top, and then now pass down, and pass up. So that was an easy one, let's find a harder one. Okay, so this one is a lot more like your typical butt joint. So as you can see, it rocks, which means it needs pretty good fill on either side. And it's not so bad at the top. Now comes the very particular job of coating this thing. And I'm very specific about how I like to do these. So I'm going to go one foot wide on each side of this joint because it's not a huge one. It doesn't need to go three feet wide. This will be settled in a two foot joint. So I get plenty of material. I just start from the top and go down. And start from where I left off and go down. And I take it right into the flat joint. Do another one. Boy, these knives are huge. I don't know how people I don't know how people use these things all day instead of a trowel. Okay, now comes the very important first step. And this is where you have to bend your knife onto the wall. So I'm putting tons of pressure on the right hand side and I'm going to feather the edge. And same with the left, feather the edge. So now I've feathered both edges and I'm going to again pass down here, not putting so much pressure on the edge. That one was just a gentle pass to push the material into the middle of the joint. And I'm going to do one more on this side, just a gentle pass. So now what I have done is you can see this lift off line, not this line, that's a piece of crud, a hitchhiker traveling in my mud. But you can see this lift off line down the center of the joint. That's good, but we're not done yet. Now that I've got most of the material all in the center of the joint, I'm going to do one more pass directly down the middle with this. Okay. And that is exactly where I'm going to leave it. And I know it's not going to be that easy for you, but eventually maybe you'll be able to get the idea behind this. Now let me explain why that's so important. Okay, I know it's a bit hard to see, but here is one lift off. And here is your other lift off. And they are both on the other side of the joint. The joint is right down the middle. And the reason I want this is this is the biggest point of shrinkage there and there. That is where there's the most material. And I want these lines. These are my lift off lines that I'm just going to sand off on my next coat. 
So it's a big, broad, flat surface down the center of the tape. And then I've got my liftoffs on either side of the tape. Now, why is that important? Why am I fussing so much about exactly where those liftoffs are? The reason is it is easy to hide tape. If I left the lift off in the middle of the joint, I will create a hump, like a speed bump in the wall. So the reason that I have the lift offs on either side and I use the 12 inch knife down the center is I create a broad flat surface. When you are making a butt joint, you are trying to make a long rolling undulation. It's one thing to hide tape, it is another to hide the joint. I have gone into too many houses where I have seen speed bumps all over the wall. I can't see the tape, but I can see every single joint. So on the next step, when we sand it and coat it one more time, you'll see how it creates a long, broad, rolling undulation on the wall instead of a speed bump that is obviously visible as soon as a shadow gets cast across it. So I always like to sand my butt joints in between coats. And I've got some pretty aggressive 100 grit here on a nice flat pad. And if you remember, I've got one lift off here and one lift off here. And I want to create a nice broad flat space right here. So I'm going to sand down my lift offs and I'm also going to sand sort of like this to try and flatten this area out even more. And if you start sanding and you see the tape, you've gone too far. Stop. Sand my lift off. Sand my other lift off. And then I'm going to sand this middle even flatter. So now when I go like this, it feels pretty good. What you're trying to do with your first coat is you're trying to create the form of the wall. So I left enough material on there that I could sand it even flatter. So now this is actually the shape that it's always going to be. When I add my next coat, it's going to be fairly thin. And all that does is fill in all the scratches, all the porosity and all the little inconsistencies that were left behind. My final coat is going to wind up real smooth. So the key there is that I put enough material on that I could sand this down and have a nice flat base. And that way I can guarantee that I'm going to do it in two coats over top of tape. So now it's time to do the final coat on the butt joints. And for this one I'm going to be using a 12 inch knife. And one thing I should have mentioned but I haven't yet is you should look down the blade of your knife and you will notice that the corners of it bend a certain way. For example, this one curves this way. And you should always have it so that the curve is against the wall. And the reason is, is the edges are bent up a little bit so that they don't gouge when you're going down. If you use it the wrong way, you'll be leaving grooves and lines in your mud every time. Flip it around and it should work that problem out. For final coat, I like my mud fairly thin. It makes it a lot easier. And so I'm just going to coat the whole thing over again and then wiping it off fairly smooth. Right now I'm just putting material on, still pretty thick. Going right down, going right down into the flat. And putting extra material where it's needed. I haven't gone all the way up to the top yet. I focused on just getting the material onto the wall first and I'm going to keep making sure that I don't have any empty spots. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit and go right up into the corner, right up into the corner. Okay, now clean my bead off. Feather my edge. Now I'm going to do my finishing passes and I'm going to start keeping my knife like this. This is exaggerated, but that's the idea is that I'm keeping the pressure this way as I work this way. Oh. If you 
hear that, you've made. Okay, I've got a line here. I need to go over it again. Let's take a look at that. So my edge is nicely feathered. There's really nothing there to sand. I went right up into the top corner. I cleaned off this edge. And I've tried to leave about one millimeter of material on roughly. So I'm not wiping it off so much that I'm compressing the mud together. What I'm doing is leaving a thin film left over so that there's enough material on there for a nice sanding coat and that I don't sand back down into the previous work. If you wipe it off too tight, you're going to be sanding into your previous work and you're going to start getting all kinds of weird shadows and ridges. You want to have just enough on there for a nice sanding coat. And now I'm going to show you guys one other little secret trick you can do. Haha! -ha. Homeowners, I think you're going to like this one. So I've got my mud nice and thin. I'm going to dip it in and then I'm going to get as much material off of it as I can. And I'm going to quickly roll this butt joint here. Feather your edges right away. They'll dry out and look like crap. So I actually do that quite a lot and the reason is I have major neck and shoulder problems from doing like this for the last eight years of my life and I find using the roller to apply the mud only on the final coat. You can't do it on the first coat because you can't apply it thick enough. I do that on the final coat and it can really take a load off my shoulder and it's actually pretty darn fast too. So I do this on my final coat when I'm skimming out whole ceilings or whole walls. It's a bit messy and tricky at first. I made it look easy. You guys are probably going to get massive blobs on the floor when you first try it, but with a little practice, it gets pretty easy. So I don't usually do that trick on everything, on corner beads or on flats usually, but on large, broad surfaces with a lot of area to cover, it works pretty nice. So the final thing to do is to sand. And I like to use a foam-backed sandpaper if you can find any for my final coat. This helps take away any of the scratches you're going to get while you're sanding. And remember, don't sand straight up and down. Never sand this way or it'll flip over. But I sand in a slightly diagonal motion, about maybe about 10 to 20 degree tilt. And I sand like that. And that stops it from getting lines when you're sanding. And it's also not so angled that it'll flip. So anyways, I hope with those tips, you're able to get some really nicely finished butt joints. Thanks for watching.